Okay, we're going to take your question, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to have Kimberly, who has gone through this, I'm going to describe what uh, some of the other things that you're going to read about in the email that you get. I'm going to talk about that. We have some fr a free bonus for you, uh, an audio file that, that I created, and, uh, and I'm a big believer in audio, and I'll touch on that in a minute, but let's, let's talk about your emotional question. Any of them. Pick the biggest oh, okay, okay. Pick an emotional one, Eric. Uh, the whole list of confinement okay. and a whole list of panic attacks. Okay, so tell me about confinement. Who, who has confinement issues? Tell me something about confinement. What is it, what, what, what's the story that you tell yourself? We'll start with Albert. There's no story, I just start like panicking, sweating. Okay. I feel like I can't escape. Okay, so, and, and that's a tough one because there's always a story, but, it's, it, but we don't look, like it, look at it like that. So, so it's feelings, mm -hmm. right? So what is it about the feelings they're super uncomfortable. They're super uncomfortable. And, and, you know, you may never have had this thought, but what would it be about, wh why do we have feelings? We're human. You didn't know you were going to lay down on the couch and we're going to do all this. Yeah, we're human, but what's the point? There's an obvious point for one why? thing. If, 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 I, if, I, you know, if I stick my hand with a nail or a, something like that, what's the point? I thought you meant emotional feelings. Well, yeah, the emotions are the emotions are an extension of that, yeah. right? And 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 with the, with the research now uh, in neuroscience, we know that when if you have a literally have a broken heart, you have a relationship that went south on you. They've analyzed, they've done MRIs, and they find the same areas of the brain that are identified with physical pain as if you had your arm cut off, light up when you have a broken heart. So there is a quality to that. And one of the things that, that, that I've seen time and time again over the 31 years I've been doing this is when you feel so rotten on the inside, that's why I say some of you would rather die than, than feel what you're feeling because it's so miserable, all right? I think there's a logic circuit up there that says, oh my God, if I feel this badly, certainly I must be in jeopardy. Does that make sense? Because feelings are designed to tell you when, you're, when boundaries are being. And when you get angry, why do you get angry? I'm putting all the pressure on you. Why, why do we get angry? Because we feel like we're threatened. You know, We feel like somebody's crossing a boundary with us. It may be unfair. They're, they're, I read the other day the thing about fairness. Fairness is a huge issue for human beings. We do not like if we perceive that we're, that we're un, being unfairly treated, okay? So that's a general thing, but that's why I say, so, there, so there's no story that's conscious up here, but there is one on an unconscious level at least, you know? It's saying, you know, I feel I badly. I can't get out of here, right. and I don't like the feeling. If you, if, you could have, if you could somehow manifest not, you know, trying to get out of there or wanting to get out of there but, but feeling frustrated. Can't get out of there. You're right, you can't. <laughs> well, you can, but it's really, the consequences are really, they suck. Yeah. You know, you make a big scene, you, they, we throw you in jail, or you, you're not even a parachute. Yeah, you, you can't even get the door open at, at 35,000 feet, you know. And if you could, it's a long step, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Anybody else on, on emotional? I mean, tell me more about it. That's how I've learned from you all. You know, what's it like? It sucks to, to have those feelings and not be able to resolve them. So that's why you, you and, that, and that is the amygdala that's being triggered. That is not... Well, well, thinking can bear into that because I can't get out of here can amplify that. But the amygdala is the one that says, trapped, i got to get out of here. Because running is the first relief, right? It's, it's flee first, it's fight second, and the third one's what? Freeze. But we, don't, we haven't given that much, much attention in, in, in humanity. And, free, and um, mammals, all, almost all, every mammal has a shake response when after they've been in a freeze mode. Little uh, prey animals go into freeze mode to protect themselves. It, you know, they realize right away, I can't get away from the fox, I can't make it down the hole, but, but my camouflage and his poor eyesight, if I just go motionless, I may survive, okay? And he may lose interest or lose, lose sight of me, okay? But when we do it, we don't do very well with it, in the, and it's the aftermath. And there is a form of therapy called somatic experiencing by Peter Levine. And you, and you actually do. You shake. That's one thing. And I, I often think, I know I played a lot of basketball myself. When you watch the NBA and the guys come up to the free throw line, they're, they're literally lowering their anxiety to, to calm themselves down. So that's a part of mindfulness. And, and the, the audio that I 
that I that you'll be able to access after the class tonight talks about mindfulness. That's that's where most of the value is going to lie for you, is doing that. And and before you ever get on the airplane, figuring out how to lower your baseline anxiety, so that now you can you can endure those little spikes in there. Okay. Good enough for now. We're get, we can, we're going to continue the discussion in the airplane, but I do want to. Okay. We're going to be in D3. Cool. Okay, so but I still have to hand out the Okay, why don't we why don't we start handing those out? Oh. I got to call the name. Well, go ahead. And yeah, okay. Name. Come on, come on up, Kimberly. Kimberly the the path that we have here is the 101 here and I tr we try to do those every month. We've had to skip a couple because I had some classes to do in Burbank and and been really busy working on a book that we're about to launch. Um, but we try to feed into it. The way we do the 201 class is it, we, we do it at a hotel. It is fee-based, and we do the class in the morning. And then if you want to fly with us in the afternoon, there's no, there used to be a tuition for that, but that's free. It's included in the tuition for the morning, but only for that day. All right. So you go to a class in the morning, which Kimberly went through, and then in the afternoon, if you want to fly, you go fly with us. We buy a ticket. You have to purchase the ticket. On, on, we use Southwest Airlines typically. And the hard sell has been, let's imagine in the old days, I used to do a, a, a 201 class, and then I'd say, okay, we're going to fly again in a week or the next day or something like that. And how many of you would be willing to say, oh, yeah, let me buy the ticket because I, I need to buy it a month in advance to get the cheapest price. And then, you know, how many of you would be willing to say, oh, yeah, I'm sure I'll be ready to fly in a month? No. That way, and it was ridiculous. So now what we do is we try to hold the 101s along here and get people the confidence to come to the class um, at least a month down the road. The next one here is going to be July 20th in, in Phoenix here. And then, and then you because you want to buy your ticket at least a month in advance. That's the best way. Because it, it'll go from, sometimes they'll have a fair sale. You can get a round trip to Las Vegas for, for 200 bucks or maybe 150 bucks. But if you wait till the day before or a week before, it's five hundred dollars basically, or four fifty, because they know if you buy a ticket the day before the flight's going, you probably got to go. Okay, all right. So 